Okay, so what we are moving on to is we're moving on to a new chapter in your workbook, which is on page 553. So if everybody could open up to page 553, um, we're going to be doing lesson one and then starting lesson two. And right now what we're going to be looking at is the equation of a line. We have briefly done this when we did um, relations and functions because I taught you how to graph on your calculators. Um, but this is now going to be sort of studying the equation of the line. So what I want you to do is if you have a highlighter, um, highlight this slope y-intercept form. In math, we could write the equation of a line in three different ways. And I'm going to be teaching you these three different ways. So lesson one and lesson two is going to be on slope y-intercept form. Lesson three is going to be on the second way we could write the equation of a line. And then lesson four is going to be the third way. By far, this method is the most important. So in grade 10, we introduce all three methods to you. And then in 20-1 and 30-1, you are only going to be using this form. So you just have to be very good at this. Slope y-intercept. The equation of a line in slope y-intercept would look like this. Y is equal to mx plus b. That's the equation of a line in slope y-intercept. So m, as you know, is the slope of the line. And I did tell you what b was when we did relations and functions. And I said, OK, we'll be doing this later on. And so this is the lesson that we're going to be doing this. Whatever the b value is, that is your y-intercept. So for example, if I gave you y is equal to 2 over 3x minus 5. So let's say I gave you this. This line is in sloped y-intercept form, right? The slope of this line is 2 thirds. So the slope tells you a few things. This is a positive slope. So we know that the direction of the line is going to be rising to the right. And then what the slope also tells you is it tells you that we could rise two, run three. So let's say rise two, run three, get back on the line. Rise two, run three, get back on the line. The y-intercept of this line would be this number here. Uh, y is equal to negative five. That is my y-intercept. If I asked you to graph this line, what you would do is you would draw yourself a Cartesian plane and you would say, OK, I need to start at negative five. So we always start at the y intercept. So one, two, three, four, five. And you would put a dot there. And that's going to be a point on your line. Then what you would do. Is from that y-intercept, once you've got that plotted, you would follow your slope. So you would rise two and you would run three. So rise two and run one, two, three. That would be your next point. From here, you would rise two and run one, two, three. That would be your next or your third point. Once you have points, you would then take your ruler and you would connect your points and that would be your linear graph. Just to review, so if you have your calculators, let's take your calculators out and let's enter this onto our calculators. So 2 thirds X minus 5. Whenever we enter um, a fraction, we want 2 thirds to be in a bracket. So how you would enter this onto your calculator is you would go to Y is equal to and I've got to clear this stuff. Okay, you would hit open bracket, two divided by three, close that bracket and type in your X and then minus five. I've changed my window. So just in case you've changed your window, I want everybody to hit the zoom button. And then I want you to hit number six. And that's going to reset your window to a standard 10 by 10 window. So here is my y-intercept of negative five, 
And then if you go up two and to the right three, you would be back on your line. Up two and to the right three, you would be back on your line. Remember to get your table of values is second function table. So this is where you get your table of values. There's my y-intercept right there. Your y-intercept is when x is equal to zero. So if I was to plot this, uh, that would be a nice point. Zero, negative five is a nice point. Three, three would be a nice point. So those are all nice points on your graph. Okay, so let's, um, look at the investigation on the next page, which is on page 554. So if you want to flip to this. So a linear equation is an equation of a line in the form of y is equal to mx plus b is uh, a linear equation. This is going to produce a line graph. And the reason why this is going to produce a line graph is because the degree on my x is a 1. OK, so. This uh, graph here. So y is equal to just write this off to the side. 2 over 3 x minus 1. So from here. If we were to plot this without using our calculators, where you always start is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept of this graph is your b value, which is negative 1. So they put a dot right here at negative 1. Once you have the y-intercept plotted, your second step is to follow the slope. In this case, the slope is whatever number is in front of your X, which is two thirds. So follow the slope means we are going to rise two and we are going to run three. So from here, you go up two and you go to the right three and you'd be back on your line. Go up two and to the right three and the next point would be right there. Remember that you have to be just as comfortable going in the opposite direction. So the opposite of rising two and running to the right three would be falling two, going to the left three. So from here, we would fall two and I would go to the left three. So that's another point on my line. Fall two and go to the left three. And that would be a point on my line. So if you wrote these two steps down, I just want you to write down um, steps to graph. So steps to graph would be those two steps there. Okay. Um, for this one, let's just do a couple of things. So you should be able to look at this and say that this, the equation of this line, just looking at the line, we know that that's going to have a positive slope, right? And going down uh, this line, falling to the right, that's going to be a negative slope. So for here, they give you the equation 2x plus 1. The slope of this, m is equal to, uh, because the equation is y is equal to mx plus b, that is your M for each of these. So the first slope is two, and the second slope is negative five over two. The y-intercepts are these guys. So the y-intercept is the B value. Um, so in this case, the B value is one, B is equal to one. So the y-intercept is equal to one. Here, the y-intercept is equal to negative 3. 
Uh, D says, uh, make a conjecture about the slope and the y-intercept of the graph of this linear equation. So they just want the slope and the y-intercept. Slope. Y-intercept. Let's say they gave you an equation that looked like this. Uh, negative 5 plus 2x. This would be a linear line, but right now it's not written in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. So what you'd want to do is if you're given an equation like this in your homework or on a test, you want to rewrite this so that your mx is first. You're basically, uh, your variable is going to be first followed by your constant. So if I said, well, what would that be in the form of y is equal to mx plus b? You would say 2x minus 5. And then easily you could look at this and say the y-intercept of this graph is negative 5. And a slope of this graph, we're going to rise to run 1. Rise to run 1 is how you would do that. Okay, conversely, what they could do is they could give you an equation like this. So let's just rewrite this. 2y is equal to 5x plus 8. You always want to be in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. So what that means is that your y must be isolated. I cannot enter anything on my calculator unless y is by itself. And then I want my... Um, slope and x, and then my constant at the end. So what that means is we're not currently in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. I would have to get rid of this 2. So to get rid of that 2, um, you're going to divide that by 2. What you do to one side, you do to everything on the other side. So the equation of this line in slope y-intercept form is going to be 5 over 2x plus this reduces to 4. And now we are in slope y-intercept form. The y-intercept of my graph is four. So here's zero, one, two, three, four. That's my y-intercept. The slope of this graph is five over two, which means rise five, run two, right? But I can't, I'd be off my grid, right, if I go up five to the right two to get to the next point. So I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So say to yourself, what's the opposite of rising five and going to the right two? The opposite would be falling five and going to the left two. And you'd be there. And then from that point, falling five and going to the left two. And then that would be another point on the graph. So again, isolating uh, your Y is the other thing they could do to try to trip you up. Okay, let's get right into the questions. So class example number one, determine the slope and Y intercept of the graph of the linear equation listed below. So what we're going to do is um, for each one, you're going to write slope is equal to and y-intercept is equal to. For this one, I need you to rewrite this. So this one currently is not in the form of mx plus b. So you need to rewrite this one. This one you need to rewrite as well. So get rid of that 6. And then once you have that, write down the slope and the y-intercept. Slope and y-intercept. Okay, I'm just going to pick different people to give me answers. So for A, uh, Rebecca, what is the slope of A? Um, the slope is 3 over 1. 
Yes. And you know what? I'm totally fine if you just say three. Um, you only need to really write over one is if you were graphing it. Yeah, so three or three over one is, is fine. Um, Arshia, what is the y-intercept for this first one? Two. Yes. Okay, for this one, Davy, could you please read me the new equation of this line written in slope y-intercept form? y equals two, uh, negative two over three x plus seven. Perfect. Based on that, Noah, what is the slope? Okay, I'm gonna skip Noah and go to Josh M. Josh, do you have the slope? Uh, two over three. Careful. Yes, negative two over three. So you always have to tell me like the if there's a sign with it. Actually, you only have to tell me if the sign is negative. So negative two over three. Uh, Bella, what's the y-intercept? Seven. Seven is the answer. Uh, Duncan, what is the equation of this line? Please give it to me reducing the slope though. Y is equal to eight over six X plus. Um, one over six. Yes. Now, what's eight over six though reduced? Because you always give your slope in reduced form. Um, four over three. Yes. So this would be four over three x plus one over six. If this was a nice decimal, you could say like, let's say this was 0.25, you could say plus 0.25. Because this is going to be um, a repeating number, just keep that as a fraction. So then from there, Oliver, what do you have as the slope of this graph? The slope of which graph? Of C. Oh, four over three. Four over three is the answer. And Habib, what do you have is the y-intercept? One over six. Yes. So that's how you would do this. Let's do class example two. Okay, consider this equation. State the slope and the y-intercept. So we would say, okay, until you get good at this, you could write this down if you need above it. But the slope of this graph is 2. And the y-intercept of this graph is negative 5. Um, when we graph, remember that step 1 is always uh, plot the y-intercept. which was negative five. So on your grid, uh, put a coordinate at negative five, and then you could go to step two, which is follow the slope. So follow the slope, and the slope was two over one, which is a rise of two and a run of one. So from here, we're gonna go up two and to the right one up two and to the right one, up two and to the right one. If you want, do a couple going to the left. So go down two and to the left one, down two and to the left one. From here, you would get your ruler and we're going to connect the dots and make sure, uh, because this is these are all gonna be linear graphs in grade 10, no dot should bounce off your line. If you have a dot that's like bounced off, you did uh, your wrong, you did your following your slope wrong for one of your coordinates. And that's what uh, the graph would look like. If uh, D says verify using the graphing calculator, so let's type in 2x minus 5. So take your calculators out and go to y is equal to, clear what you have, type in two x is next to your alpha, minus five. Graph this, there's your graph. Y intercept is at negative five. I'm gonna check a couple, I'm gonna check maybe one more point. So second function table, let's check 
uh, when X is four, Y is three. So how I would do that. Oh, and mine looks slightly off because what it's saying is when X is four, Y should be three. So my line is like slightly off. There. Yeah, that's how you do that question. So that's class example number two. Class example number three. Consider the equation y is equal to two thirds x minus six. Uh, state the y intercept. Okay, so y intercept of this graph is right here. And once you know what your y intercept is, you put that guy on. State the x intercept algebraically. So in 20 1, they are huge on x and y intercepts, finding those two algebraically. So, how we do that is write your equation of your line. If they want the x intercept, what you do is you let the opposite letter equal zero. Okay, so they want the X intercept, so I'm going to let Y equal zero. I need to isolate this, so get rid of your negative six by adding six to both sides. And I would have six is equal to two thirds X. Um, X is being divided by three. So to get rid of that divide by three, the opposite of dividing something by three is multiplying by three. So we're going to have 18 is equal to 2x. And then I get rid of that 2 by dividing that side by 2 and that side by 2. And the x-intercept of this graph is 18 divided by 2, which is 9. So the ordered pair, if it's an x-intercept, remember that y is 0. So at 9 and 0. If you have two points, that's all you actually need in order to get your graph. Um, if the two points are really close together, I always say, okay, get some more points. But because these two are spaced out, we could now uh, graph this. And then I'll show you where we're going to follow our slope to double check. Okay, so take your ruler. And have it go through those two points. OK, so um, C says mark the X and Y intercepts on the grid, and then it says join the points together. So we've done that. And it also says extend your line. So remember, you always want to use as much of your grid paper as possible. And actually, I don't think I did this in the last couple of examples, but what we should also do is we should also put arrowheads on each end of our line to show that this line uh, continues in both directions, right? So we want to do that. So that's what C says. And then verify the graph and the intercepts using your graph and calculator. So let's verify this using our graph and calculator. So we're going to punch this into our graph and calculator. Make sure your two thirds is in a bracket. I uh, know I got your message. OK, so Y is equal to open bracket 2 divided by 3, close that bracket X minus 6. Let's graph this. So there is our negative 5. There is our 9. Another way that you could find this, I will show you that table of values again, but another way that I had taught you when we did relations and functions 
hit the second function button on your calculator and hit this calculate, which is right above trace. If you type in a, a value, number one, they I could put any X value that I want here and I want to check when X is zero is the Y intercept in fact negative five. So when X is or oh, sorry, negative six, when X is zero, the X intercept is negative six. I haven't showed you how to graphically find this, or at least I don't think I did. That's going to be in 20 dash one. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is just look at your table of values. And if you are looking for an X intercept, Y must be zero. So I don't see any zeros here. And there is my X intercept. X is nine and Y is zero. OK. Um, before. Oh, and that's it for this lesson. So let me give you your homework. And then. Um, we'll start the next lesson. So if you guys can circle number two, number three, number four A to C, and number five, and then just want to see yes so for now i just want you to do those ones um, i'm just going to quickly look at number five so when it says x intercept algebraically what that means so number five for each line state the y intercept so easily you could look at these there's all your y intercepts. OK, determine the x intercept algebraically. So it does say to do that. So what I want you to just make note of here when you're doing this one, it's like we just did. If you're determining the x intercept, you let the other variable equal zero. So for example, let's do this one together. Zero is equal to six over seven x minus six. We need to isolate this, so get rid of your negative six by adding six to both sides. And we would get six is equal to six over seven X. Um, X is being divided by seven. So you would always get rid of, if you have like a fraction, get rid of the uh, denominator first. So the opposite of dividing by seven is multiplying by seven. So multiply this side by seven and this side by seven. And we would get uh, seven times six is 42 is equal to six X. And then get rid of that, um, isolate the X by dividing both sides by six. And you would get an X intercept of uh, seven and that ordered pair is going to be seven comma zero. So then um, it wants you to graph it without using a graphing calculator. So for this one, you would graph the y-intercept first. So negative six. You would graph the x-intercept at seven. And you would connect those two dots, put arrowheads at the end of each line, and you would have that. I'm just going to stop this recording.